Hello, and welcome to Things We Learned This Week, a show about research, facts, and combating the apparent human need to make shit up. I'm your co-host, Jacob Morrow. And I'm your other co-host, Jordan Williams. And I still get the, like, weird butterfly things before we start this thing. I, don't <laughs> I know, right? It's like, oh, all these people out in front of me that are listening to my show. I don't want them to see me all nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but it, it feels like the like the first date jitters, you know, like you you. It's, I, I don't know what it is. Like I, I obviously not dating you, Jacob, but for well, I mean, reason, we're 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 dating wait. all of our wonderful audience members. Um, <laughs> I hope that they're picking up the tab for dessert. See, I was raised in a polygamy free household, Jacob. So I don't know if that's uh, if that's uh, hey, we are we're me. we're cool with all sorts of kinds of degeneracy here. <laughs> on things we learned this week. We accept all kinds. Oh, by the way, this, My degeneracy this week... is just as welcome as yours, as Jordan, and so is all others. Yep, this week's episode is sponsored by Sin. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Belial. <laughs> <laughs> Our patron oh, saint. Okay, so, yeah. um... Uh, anything, uh, anything to start off this week, Jacob? What's What's been going on in, uh, uh, Jacob's life this week? Um, I kind of been busy. I've had like just a bunch of like meetings and stuff this week. Uh, I have a show that I'm going to tomorrow that I'm excited for for my theater class. Ooh. Uh, it's a uh, an act of God. The lead center is putting on. I'm really excited. Wait, and uh, you might want to we might want to start cutting out the uh, whole uh, you know polygamy thing before you go to a show like that. Um, <laughs> Actually, it's a. Audience. It's actually written by a a dude that was the head writer for The Daily Show when Jon Stewart was still there. Oh. And, like, (laughs) he has an interview where he's talking to some folks. We watched it for, like, class for, like, a prep day, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And, like, (laughs) he's sitting there in front of these two other people, and he's like, yeah, I don't really consider myself a prophet, but, like, I did work very closely with God on this. (laughs) Oh. Yeah, I, I don't know why God came to me. I think it's probably because he uh, he knows that he's not very funny and he's not very empathetic and no one really likes him. So, <laughs> wow. Okay. So he came to me to help him out. <laughs> it was like shit, dog. All right, well. you got him. <laughs> okay, okay. So it's a it it's a very it it's making fun of the the idea. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I can, yeah. I can get that. You know, anything Daily Show is usually something with it, a little bit of satire to it. It's so dry. It the whole and like it's literally like a ten minute interview where he just talks about like his experiences with God co writing it, <laughs> <laughs> and just talking about how like <laughs> God is uh, looking at making either another play or going into film. Huh. All right. But yeah, it's it's very good. It's very good. But, well, yeah. sounds like you have anything that you have. Um, well, I got cucked out of a Mewtwo today. I'm a little salty oh, no. about that. <laughs> so, uh, my friend, my friend, uh, Gavin, you might see him on the show in the future. Um, he got me into Pokemon Go again early last year, just to, mostly to spite my roommate at the time. And so I've been playing it off <laughs> and on since then, maybe once or twice a month, I'll go out and go for a walk. But, uh, there is a Mewtwo on campus, and, uh, long story short... This dude on campus that I really, really do not like that will remain unnamed um, started <laughs> it, started it, got everyone together, and then started it without me. So that is garbage. <laughs> that is salty. straight up garbage. Because I mean, it's the one thing I haven't seen in the game yet, you know. So <laughs> the only thing to get me excited it. about it anymore, except for that weird <laughs> nut thing. Did, did you hear about that, by the way? Which thing? So there's a, I might have to do some Googling in a second here, but there is a Pokemon that showed up that nobody had ever seen before that might okay. be a new Kanto region Pokemon. Just a new Pokemon that they're just yeah. introducing in Pokemon Go? Yeah, so it, it, okay. was, it was weird. They're, everyone thought it was a glitch. It basically looked like a tiny ditto with like a, like a, a nut, like not like, like a wood nut, but a steel nut, the thing you put on a screw. Oh no, I saw, no, they put out like a... They sent me like an email about that that there were dead there were dittos appearing as some as something that looked like that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so I can't remember what that was. It's a thing called a Meltan. Meltan. It's a steel type, and people are speculating that it might be the new Kanto region exclusive that's going to be announced in the new Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu. Oh, cool! Out. The badly mm-hmm. named games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm debating buying a Switch just to play those games. So. 
I mean, same though. How much do they sell on eBay for? <laughs> I might, uh, I might look into that. <laughs> well, um, they're selling a region. Well, not a region exclusive. They're selling a bundle offer where you can get the Pokemon Let's Go with Eevee or Pikachu, the Pokeball controller thing that also functions oh, yeah, as a Pokemon yeah. Go Plus, and then you can also get a themed dock and controllers. Like they look like Eevee and Pikachu with the color. Oh, that's on cool. Them. Okay. Mm-hmm. How much uh, is that? Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. Yeah. So I've been trying to sell my uh, Xbox 360 to put towards that. But and my soul. <laughs> yeah. GameStop offered me it. So I tried to trade in twenty games in Xbox 360, two extra controllers, and my left leg at GameStop. And the best they could do was fifty five dollars. <laughs> I tried to sell my left kidney to GameStop, and all they gave me was this <laughs> shitty version of <laughs> Mario Kart Four. They could have given they could have given me sixty five if I vouched for in store credit and the blood of my firstborn child. But, um, <laughs> I kindly passed on that, and I'm now selling on eBay. Oh uh, shit! Well, power to the gamers, you know. Mm. Or power well, to the players. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of Nintendo, um, we can go ahead and start with my uh, uh, my info this week. If All you right, want. yeah, go ahead. I think you okay. do start anyway. Yeah, it is my turn this week. So, um, Jacob and I, we have no idea what we're doing in this episode for each other. Yes, we. Mostly this because... is the first episode where we're going into it completely blind for each other. Yeah, bite the pillow because we're going in dry. We have no clue oh. what's going to happen. Ew, this episode. Ew, ew. <laughs> At least take me out to dinner first. <laughs> hey, that's my lie. Anyway, so <laughs> this week I actually found my article about an hour before this episode started, not going to lie. Nice. Um, I'm going to be covering the recent train, well, recent as of September 27th, 2018, the weird pop up meme that is Bowsette. Okay. So I don't know yeah, if you've I, seen. Okay. But um, there's this weird image going around of a character that looks like Princess Peach with a black dress, horns, and usually some sort of weird sexual connotation attached to it. I mean, yeah, of course. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I I know what you mean. Oh, yeah, (laughs) yes, okay. (laughs) This is Bowsette. Now, Bowsette is not just some random (laughs) Rule 34 drawing. Bowsette is an actual character that people have fallen in love with for whatever reason. So how, how she really originated was uh, there was a recent Nintendo press conference that was advertising the new um, Super Mario Brothers game, the re- the remake of the Wii U Super Mario Brothers that's being ported okay. with a bunch of extra stuff. Well, and on top of all the Nintendo Wii U stuff and the uh, the weird Navit game mode, you can play as you can play in this game as Mario, Luigi. The blue and yellow toads, Nabbit, that weird okay. rabbit thing with the sack that you oh, have yeah, that okay, yeah. seen around. I, I get what you mean. But in addition, they've added the rising star, Toadette. Okay, yeah, of course. So you can play as Toadette, and to- it looks like Toadette has a unique mushroom called a... Yeah, I think it she's... was called a crown shroom. Oh, okay. And when she well, puts, it... when she puts okay. on this crown shroom... She turns into a nearly identical but slightly different version of Princess Peach. Oh, she turns into Bowsette? <laughs> no, not Bowsette, or... not Bowsette. Uh, what, what, is, what it is is uh, it looks like Princess Peach, but it has Toadette quality. So it's, it's still got like Toadette's ponytail, and her dress looks a little bit more pink and shroomy. Okay, cool. Like, uh, I'm looking at an image now, and I'm trying to describe it. So it looks like Princess Peach, but she's got... Toadette's little crown thing, it looks like. Her ponytails, a bow, and a spotted dress, kind of like, and it's spotted kind of like the top of a mushroom. Okay. And so, after this press conference, that got everybody, well, not everybody, the, you know, that niche part of the internet talking. Can other characters, yes, can other characters put on this crown? And so okay. what it what it came down to is people started drawing this Bowsette character, a theory character of if Bowser happened to pick up this crown shroom and turned into an embodiment of Princess Peach. <laughs> okay. 
So, from what I can find, the original the original Bowsette image comes from uh, a meme. Like it was rule thirty four, right? <laughs> no, not rule thirty four. Directly from rule thirty four dot com, so, right? <laughs> Uh, according to knowyourmeme.com, the actual the actual definition of Bowsette is she is an anthropomorphized gender bend version of the Super Mario villain Bowser, caused by the effects of the Super Crown power up. Okay. And then, l- later on in the article, it shows the origin, which is on September nineteenth, two thousand eighteen, Twitter user at ak ninety two spelled a y y k nine two, aka Haniwa posted a comic in which, after Mario and Bowser are both romantically rejected by Princess Peach, Bowser undergoes the same transformation as Toadette into Peachette, turning into a human woman. The female Bowser and Mario then appear to be dating. Oh my god! The comic gained over <laughs> I, 15... I love... The comic gained over 15,000 retweets and 42,000 likes until the next few day, within the next few days. And if I do a quick Google right now... I'm going to see how much exactly this guy has been, uh, how many retweets this has. Okay, so right now it has 85,000 retweets and 195,000 likes. Goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. And this is not even 10 days from original post. Gosh. Gosh. And then apparently it doesn't stop there. Okay. So this is where the branches kind of go off into two different questions. The first question being, should Bowser, a big burly turtle dude, really, when he puts on the crown, turn into such a skinny version of Princess Voluptuous female, yeah. yeah. A voluptuous female with blonde hair. And so that's when people started taking the comic and coming up with their own versions of the character. Okay. So generally making a much burlier woman with a lot more animalistic qualities, such as like a full-on turtle shell and like sometimes even the scaly skin. Okay. And the other half of this is what happens when other characters adorn the crown? Okay. So a lot of people started making fan art of other characters that happened to put on the crown. Okay. So that's where you get images crashing the internet, such as uh, Boo-Et, which is a, it looks like a white-haired woman in kind of like a white gown that kind of resembles okay. Princess Peach, which is Boo. And there's also versions of Chain Shop and I guess even Bullet Bill that I haven't seen quite yet that are all just kind of Jordan, this is all porn. <laughs> no, it, <laughs> Did you Google it? Yes, I Googled it. That's what yeah. everyone's doing right now. <laughs> so the art none of the ones that i've seen have been direct porn but on that topic pornhub what do you and... mean none of the ones that you've what no they're all completely closed jacob but th- from what i've okay. seen from what i've seen there's an article you porn and pornhub both did um <laughs> a little bit of research and even there was even a bar graph developed based on what has been happening here so oh if I can find the right tab here, um, I think I saw what you were talking about. <laughs> which one, the, little, the graph, or are you talking about the thing where it like shot up in searches? Yeah. Okay. So on Pornhub, the Bowser and Bowsette searches in the last few months. So on Pornhub, it was a it was a slightly more than zero searches on September fifteenth, all the way through the twenty first. By the twenty sixth, the the uh, it's um the searches for Bowser shot up to five hundred or fifty one thousand eight hundred and eighty two percent. God. And the searches for Bowsette. Shut up three hundred and twenty three thousand one hundred and ninety seven percent. God. In the ga- in the span of four days, it went from zero to over three hundred thousand searches for Bowsette. God. And as of right now, 
It's shelled out over 500... Sh- <laughs> shelled out. Nice job, Venture B. Gosh. Anyway, the dynamic, the dynamic duo has shelled out over 500,000 Pornhub searches in just over 72 hours. Like we said earlier, we accept all kinds of degeneracy here on Things We Learned <laughs> This Week. <laughs> and porn saw a similar <laughs> increase going from 0% in on the 23rd to 200 or 2900% the 24th up to 5849% the 25th god uh, i mean respect <laughs> yeah. but aside from porn people want this to be a legitimate character There's no like absolutely a... i absolutely think that's absolutely fantastic but like what happens to mario and luigi <laughs> Um, and even more important to me, what happens to Waluigi? <laughs> oh, if they put on the peach crown? Yes! See, I haven't seen any Im- art of that, and I think that's because people are focusing on the monsters right now. <clears throat> and, okay. and one really, really ab- a bizarre thing, I saw other Nintendo characters taking the crown for their own needs, where Ash takes the crown, puts on a Pikachu, and then it's a blue-haired girl in a bikini that looks like Pikachu. I mean, <sighs> fair. Yeah. I but found I found what I was looking for. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, you might want to clear your history after we're done with this uh, this little discussion. No, we're good, we're good, we're good. <laughs> it's all fine. Anyway, um, right now there's actually a petition and a fan gathering taking place in Japan. Oh, it's a... Oh, no! <laughs> so, yeah. Um, on an article, I didn't on... Mean... <laughs> hold on, you good? Hold on. <laughs> Are you trying to sign this petition? I didn't even realize. No, I did. I, I was looking at the the Waluigi yet, right? Wait, that's <laughs> and a I thing. I didn't even realize what the picture was. <laughs> it's just a reskinned Wendy's. Like, <laughs> Wait, what? Wendy from Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that's fantastic. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, this this meme has exploded to the point where people want this to be a legitimate character. Um at the time of this article written by nintendolife.com and this was written it appears 2 hours ago. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, 7 a.m. this morning, so 7 a.m. of uh september 27th 2018 the petition has close to 10,000 signatures for her to become a real character in super smash bros ultimate as a peach echo um, character as a what as a peach echo character okay what's that so the new super smash brothers game has echo characters so like there's peach and then there's daisy which is essentially a reskinned version of peach oh the but... right click where you can okay that makes sense yeah 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 so, yeah, they wanted to be an echo of Peach, or at the very least, be a trophy to recognize this recent tw- trend. Okay. Uh, I mean, understandable. Then, yep, and then there's other petitions to, I guess, make her be a real character in an upcoming game at some point. Um, at least recognize her. And Nintendo has released a statement on this. Concerning the drawings and other things uploaded to the internet, we have no current comment. <laughs> we have no comment. That was from a Nintendo's Please. first person who was who was not named in this article. <laughs> so no, <laughs> what? The worst thing about Change.org is that you can you can donate money with your with the vote. Have they donated money? <laughs> folks donating like twenty bucks to the cause to get <laughs> the character included. <sighs> it's very good. So, uh, yeah, if you see Princess Peach with horns and a crown sometime in your future, you now know her origination and where she might be going in the future. Gosh. That is very good, though. I do. Yep, I'm glad I stumbled across that in a panic trying to find something to research for the day. (laughs) I mean, good work. I I give that to you. All right. All right. So are you ready for your... Do you want your... Huh? Yeah, yeah, give it to me, give it to me. In your Wikipedia article? All right. So, that one is the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> what? Uh-oh. 
that's not fair either. Damn. Sometimes it d- gives you okay. And that's bad too. Wik- Wikipedia, come on. Yeah, give me a challenge, man. Come there on. it is. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> How do you even fucking say this? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? All right, you ready for the first try? <clears throat> okay. Are you prepared? All right, let's do this. Burberry Dopsy <laughs> Um. Are you ready for the second attempt? <laughs> yes. Burberry Dopsy Um. You know what? You do, do you maybe want to just put it into the? Uh, tell you what, put it into Google and have Google pronounce it, and then we'll see do it. a different one. <laughs> okay, it was a plant. Go. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, and a map. Anima? And what? The, what is with all these fucking bad ones today? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we're doing random of all Wikipedia pages. Here so. he is. Who is Sied Mode Agile? Sied Mode Agile? Or their full name, Sied Mode Agile Sied Naguib. Okay, so see, Sied is actually a time traveler. Um, oh shit! Okay. Yeah, and he is one of the first of potentially many. It just depends on how the time travel works. Like, if more are coming back than what we know right now. Anyway, um, Sied is well, the one that actually started the trend of time travelers posting in Wikipedia about themselves in the first place. <laughs> so they're <laughs> really thing, jumped up on the bad dragon. Okay. Th- their their whole thing is basically now what they do is they edit themselves in time back in time. So that way, everyone in the future knows what they actually did. It's kind of like a dare thing. So a time traveler, there's another time traveler to make up this character. They go back in time, act out that character, then go forward in time and see if they have a Wikipedia page made of them and uh, see if what they were trying to achieve was actually done. It's like a combination of charades and telephone, but with time traveling mixed in. I mean, I have absolutely no way to prove that yours is not wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Sied was a, uh, Malaysian tennis player. Okay. Yeah, that w- he, he had a career high, uh, ATP singles ranking of 1,568. Is that a lot of um, tennis? He was right-handed. Okay. I know nothing about tennis. I could have just said tennis 14 times in a row and it would have been <laughs> nothing. <laughs> he had no career okay. titles. His career record is 0-6. Sad day. Oh. Awesome. Hey, For somebody doubles. that knows anything about tennis, tell us what that means so we can properly what, address it. What is ATP? I mean, I know that that is adreno triphosphate. <laughs> or what? amino triphosphate, but like, more than that. Jacob, you're not Help supposed to out. actually know things before this show. It's supposed to be last minute research. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jeez. All right. Speaking of non-last minute research, actually, I've had this for a little bit. Ooh, Do you want fancy. me to do mine? Let's go for it. All right. So what I'm doing is Victorian era and a little bit before that fan etiquette. Fan etiquette. So, so we're like not the people watching. About, we're not talking about sporting fans. We're talking about the physical objects. <laughs> oh, I was really kind of hoping Victorian <laughs> etiquette for watching a wrestling match, but let's, let's <laughs> it all it all bends in on itself. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> well i mean they probably did have fans on them mm. but they were not only used to cool oneself off that is what the whole thing is about so um this whole topic is gonna get pretty like bougie because it's about like rich folk from the victorian era it's always oh. kind of gross to think about like oh majority of these people were just worrying about like oh my fan how will i ever find a lover without my fan well people were literally like starving to death and being enslaved so Ooh. like <laughs> so <laughs> you know for, the, for those of you at home i'm currently recording the rest of this podcast with both my pinkies up so <laughs> yes uh, fanciness yes absolutely if you pick up your phone to pause this you have to have your pinky up the entire time Trust me, I will find out. (laughs) But um, I still found it really interesting in regards to, like, women finding a way to work around the sexism that they were, you know, oppressed by. So, handheld fans have appeared throughout history from the Egyptians used them as religious symbols in, like, their ceremonies, as well as signs of power and wealth for, like, pharaohs and other, like, leaders, right? 
to the Japanese who invented like the idea of like a fan that doesn't just stay open. It can like fold and close, like open and close. Like, and although these uses and instances are like old as hell, there really isn't much evidence in them being used as much more than an accessory, or more than an accessory or as a method of cooling yourself off. That is However, false. For anybody oh, who has played Mortal Kombat knows the katana can use those things to their fullest oh, potential. Shit. shit, you got me. I forgot about that. So as <laughs> of them using them as accessories, methods of cooling oneself off, or as deadly weapons in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> So, however, as China began to, like, be, like, the a major, like, th- place that imported into Europe, um, along with, like, selling tea and silk, they sold, like, a fuck ton of fans. Because <laughs> they didn't, like, people in Europe, like, didn't really know that fans were, like, a really cool thing until oh. they were like, oh, it's foreign. Hey, actually, mm. um, we talked about that um, okay. in Orange Manny's a little bit today. How basically, um, if I remember, if I remember my professor correctly, there was something along the lines of at first China did not want to trade at all for the most part. Yes. But then eventually, as time went on and on, they finally said, "Okay, yeah, we'll start." And so as they started trading things off, uh, uh, like as um, the British and the other people on their ship started trading things off their ship, they said that they needed stuff to bring back with them because of the counterbalance, which is why they started exporting in the first place. Yeah. So when the British were bringing in things like um, spices and, and opium, yeah, would... opium is the big one. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what started the opium wars because Britain decided, like, hey, if you're not going to trade with us, we're just going to get all your people hooked on opium, <laughs> and yeah. then you'll have to trade with us. Mm-hmm. God, it, shitty, shitty time. Like I said, it's all shitty, and it, I'm calling it out for being shitty, but it's still kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So, um, they were used here in Europe as a fashion accessory too, but also as a way to, like, block the sun and also to, like, shield your face from, like, the fire in, like, a hearth, right? If you're, like, indoors at night. So, Ooh. as more and more people got on board with the upcoming fandom... <laughs> get it? Could you hear my eye roll? I did. <laughs> <laughs> um... They began to, like, see use, uh, these fans got began to see use at masquerade balls, where we see their usage not for, like, physical utility, like, cooling yourself off, but instead as a way to communicate between potential lovers. So, like, it, oh. like if you see a hot dude on the dance floor, you might sign to him using your, um, using your fan. So, this is about the 18th so- century, or the Georgian era, as I was told it was called. Um, when society, you know, really fucking sucked as far as women's mm-hmm. rights were concerned. So fans really gave a woman a way to communicate romantic feelings openly without fear of old garbage people being trash monsters. So all of these young socialites, red upper class people, bleh, um, <laughs> learned most of this fan language as it, be- as it came to be called. So um, fan were... language... So fan language back then is like the early stages of getting like a, a really, really good selfie today. You know, like like when you're trying to flirt with somebody and you get like the perfect angle for everything. And it takes like four minutes to get the, like the good photo to show that, hey, I'm actually interested. Yes. That, that's the it, fan language is the we're talking of today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, fans were usually just a staple of women's fashion, although some men did carry fans and use them as a communication method too. Oh, but wow. mostly young, like young men, were only semi fluent and like reading it. But some, you know, some did carry it. Huh. Um, by the time the Victoria era came around, fans were basically mandatory. Like if you were an upper class or middle class woman, you had a fan. Hmm. And their whole social class was normally embodied by the fan, like, showed off by how fancy your fan was. So hmm. upper, upper class people would have very fancy gold plated fans that, you know, were very encrusted with jewels and had beautiful decorations. And meanwhile, mm-hmm. the middle class would, they, they would still like have beautiful fans, but they wouldn't be, you know, covered in diamonds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so fans continued like this up until like the start of the 1900s when you start to see them fall out of fashion uh, but they were still used in advertising for quite a while like even though everyone wasn't carrying them anymore and then they completely disappeared uh, a little bit later along with the majority of the fan language except with what we have found like written in magazines and stuff 
Hmm. So even though it was super important for pe- for like a person to be able to understand fan speak, it was mostly only taught like verbally as to keep like the mystique and charm of it, right? Like you didn't want a ton, like you didn't want to like read an almanac that just had all of it in there and then give it to a bunch of old people who would be like, oh my God, he just told Margaret to kiss him. Oh my <laughs> word. So I'm one, I, I have an image in my head now, like if when you're trying to take extra languages in high school, the selections between oh, yes. Spanish, German, and fan. And fan language. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so... Now, most of the signs that we know today were recorded in magazines and etiquette books, but I'm guessing it really depends on, like, where you're looking, that, like, what the sign means, because I found a lot of overlap between, like, different places and different sources as to, like, what signs mean. Mm-hmm. Because, like, obviously, like, there's not a ton you can do with a fan, right? Yeah, so, like, really. it makes I mean, sense open that... it, close it, like, help make smoke signals with it, I guess. I like... guess, yeah. Maybe, like, a Morse code, open it and close it, like... Mm -hmm. Absolutely. (laughs) But, like, it seems like with a lot of the really, like, simple things you could do, there was overlap. So, like, Mm -hmm. I'm guessing depending on, like, what region you were in, you might have had several different signs. So, um, here are some examples. If you were to take a fan, right, open, I'm guessing, and place it over your heart, it means you have won my love. Oh. Resting the fan on the heart... Right, closed probably, means my love for you is breaking my heart. A fan, closed, touched to the right eye, means when may I be allowed to see you? Um, Letting the fan (laughs) rest on the right cheek is a yes. Letting the fan rest on the left cheek is a no. Fan held over the ear means I wish to get rid of you. Hmm. Covering the left ear with an open fan means do not betray our secret, Margaret. (laughs) Fan opened wide means wait for me. Touching the fan to the tip of the finger means I wish to speak with you. Half opened fan pressed to the lips means you may kiss me. Putting the fan handle directly on the lips is a much more forceful kiss me. Huh. Resting the fan on the lips means I don't trust you. Opening and closing the fan rapidly means you are cruel. (laughs) Quickly and impetuously closing the fan means I'm jealous. Drawing the fan quickly through the hand, right? So, like, placing it in the palm and dragging it across means, I hate you. Huh. Fanning slowly means, I'm married. Fanning quickly means, I'm engaged. Hands clasped together, holding, like, an open fan means, forgive me. So, like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, holding it out to you, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Hiding the eyes behind an open fan means, I love you. Um, And then also drawing the fan across the cheek means I love you. Um, Hitting a hand's palm, like just smacking it, means love me. (laughs) (laughs) Hitting any object with a fan means I'm impatient. (laughs) Dropping the fan means we will be friends. And also dropping the fan could mean like I belong to you. So kind of, I'm guessing that kind of like goes hand in hand, like depending on like who you were talking to and in the context. So you can get friend zoned um, by a dropping a fan. That, 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 that's like, um, if somebody's got loose fingers, that could be devastating to that guy. I feel bad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, half opening the fan of the face means we are being watched. Twirling the fan in the left hand means we are being watched also. I don't know why there needed to be two of those. I don't know. Twirling the fan in the right hand means I love another. Don't talk to me. <laughs> Ooh. Passing the ha- the fan from hand to hand means I see that you are looking at another woman, Harold. Uh-oh. <laughs> what do you think you're doing, Harold? <laughs> <laughs> and then taking the fan and putting it directly up your nose means eat my whole ass. <laughs> And yeah, don't forget to forget closing the fan, holding it a lock no, in front of one's pelvis, and with a light thrust, that means DTF. <laughs> DTF. <laughs> <laughs> and then taking the fan in the air and putting and spelling FWB, well, we all know what that means. <laughs> yeah, it's time to get groceries, Harold. <laughs> time to get groceries, Harold. I see you looking at Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I don't know, I just thought it was very cool, and my um, professor in my theater class was talking about having to do, like, a lot of research of it for a play that they did, and I was like, oh, cool, okay. 
<laughs> yeah, I, and honestly, I never knew this was a thing. I'd never heard of fan etiquette, let alone, like, proper dudes trying to use fans. It's like early text messaging almost. Like Absolutely, I mean, it, absolutely. That, that, that is actually really interesting. I mean, and I'm sure all of the old folks at the time were like, oh, those kids and their fucking fans. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. All, all they do is sit and look at their fans all day, twiddling in between <laughs> their thumbs. <laughs> well, because what I'm guessing that it, like, or at least this is, like, what, like, got me thinking was, like, huh, I've seen a lot of old movies where the women have fans. I wonder if there's, like, hidden messaging I've missed between hmm. characters that I didn't even think about because they were doing shit with the fan. Yeah, like, like I thought I it was always even... just like the side eye that insinuated, like, "Hey, hey, I like you. Let's 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 go off to the powder room and have some fun." Hey, <laughs> I mean, that's probably also it, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just thought it was really cool. Yeah, I am prepared for my uh, Wikipedia page. Alrighty, um, let's see what Wikipedia has in store, Mister Morrow. I'm oh, perfect. perfect. What is Aluka? Aluka? A L U K A. Aluka. L U K A A? Mm hmm. Okay. I mean, it, it is obviously the um, improved version of the hookah. <laughs> only instead of um, taking in the smoke through your mouth, like through the little pipe, right? You take it in through your anus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you sit there and you suck it in and then you blow it out your mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry, in what way is that improved, Jacob? It, okay, it smells really bad coming out, right? Like, way worse than cigarette smoke. But damn, well, do obviously. you get high. But damn, do you get high. So you're talking about a butt chug with a hookah. That is revolutionary, but unfortunately, so, that is incorrect. Instead of coming... So what it, what it does, instead of coming through the esophagus down into the... Lo- wait. Wait, esophagus is... Okay, no. Sorry. Instead of going through the esophagus, it goes through the trachea, into the lungs. Like, instead of doing that, right? And then out through the dive. Fuck. <laughs> Hi, my name's Jacob Morrow. <laughs> my anatomy class fucking sucked. <laughs> but, um, okay. So instead of breathing the hookah in, right, through your mouth, down into your lungs, and then out, you, br- you breathe it up through your ass, up through your esophagus, then down into your lungs, and then out of your mouth. Unfortunately, Jacob, I only know of one animal that can breathe through their ass, and that is a turtle native to Asia. <laughs> How do you know? Because I've never breathed with my ass, Jacob. <laughs> Have you ever tried? That's not how snorkeling works. <laughs> anyway, oh, I got, what is it? I just, oh, I just had an image of a butt snorkel. Anyway, oh. uh, a Luca is actually an Australian band. Oh, okay. Yep. It's based in Melbourne, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. Melbourne. And consisting of three vocalists, Rachel Head, Sally Mortensen, and Annabelle Toonley. The band formed in 2008 after the members met studying music performance. Their music is usually classified as as a cappella, but is unusual for the genre as they co-write and perform original music with pop, hip-hop, and R&B elements. Hell yeah! Also unusually... Aluka's vocal harmonies are constructed without using music theory, often straying from a typical harmonic structure to produce sound not generally associated with standard a cappella. Hmm. So I'm willing to bet that it. That, I don't mean to bash on Luca, but I'm willing to bet that it's one of those bands that four people listen to and really love. Well, hey, maybe they might get some publicity after this episode if people hey, actually start maybe. listening to our stuff. Or maybe they're <laughs> a lot more popular than we are. Yeah. No. Probably. Um, yeah, they have several songs, it looks like, and, um, okay. they have locations and backup vocals and stuff that I'm not going to read. Anyway. And <laughs> stuff that I don't feel like reading right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So All I right. think that's everything for this episode. All right. Fantastic. Let's do some, uh... I don't even know what these... Let's do some show notes! Woo-hoo. Show notes! Woo! Um, also, mm-hmm. thanks to the beautiful Jasmine Frank for making our cover art. You can find more of her work at jasminelinay.com or at Jasmine Frank on Instagram. Actually, I think that is Jasmine Linay. I can't believe that I messed that up twice now, but... <sighs> She's gonna be so mad at you. <laughs> She's gonna beat my ass. <laughs> um, where can we find you, Jordan? 
Oh, you can find me on Instagram at Crashing Marty, and I do not use Twitter. All right, you can find me on uh, Tumblr at A Swarm of Birds, or you can find me on Twitter under at Muro M O O O R O W. Um, you can mail email us the show at twltwpodcast at gmail.com and follow us on Twitter at twltwpodcast. Mm-hmm. And hey, don't forget to contact us if we fuck up because you might get announced on the show. Yes, please. We will help. We will let you on the show if you just want to come on here and just rip our asses for messing something up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, come with your sources prepared and uh, yeah, we'll have that work. Um, you can find all of our sources in the show notes. Yeah. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, I Jacob, think I think it. that's going to uh, call it a day. All right. Well, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. See ya. Cool beans.